Lord. This is the day. Anybody glad? This is the day that the Lord has made. Listen, that praise was all right. If you could make a day, that praise would be all right. If I could make a day. But this is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, anybody glad and excited to be in the house of the Lord? One more time. Come on, come on, come on, musicians. Come on, musicians. This is the day. This is the day. Come on, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, come on. I'm trying to set the atmosphere. Y'all going to help me? Y'all going to help me? This is the day. Come on, come on, come on. Anybody come with expectation today? Anybody come with expectation today? Anybody come needing a prayer to be answered today? Come on, come on. Anybody come needing healing today? Anybody come needing a fresh touch from the Lord today? Get ready, 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 get ready. I want I want to do something a little different. Can, can we do a devotional song before we do the prayer? Scripture and prayer. Scripture and prayer. Come on. Candida, lead us in something. Amen.
Hallelujah. Can we just bless the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Deacon Reed. Our scripture and prayer. Our scripture and prayer. For the reading of the word, we're going to read from Romans 12, chapter 12, between 4 and 6. Thank God for another day. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, uh -huh. so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another, having then gifts different according to the grace yes, sir. of God given to us. Uh -huh. well, prophecy, yeah. let us prophecy according yeah. to the proportion of faith. Jesus name we're going to add a blessing to reading and the hearers of his word because his name is already blessed in Jesus name amen you may be seated chairman of our deacon board deacon Benny McCanns will lead us now in prayer amen let us pray eternal and everlasting father we come to you this morning oh God stretched out oh God head bowed eyes closed oh God come to say thank you Lord, for being God all by yourself, Lord. Lord, for keeping us during this week, oh God. God, the week started out stormy, oh God. God, look how you changed it. The sun is shining, not a snowflake on the ground, Lord. We say thank you right now, oh God. God, we say thank you for delivering us, for healing us, oh God, when our bodies were sick. Lord, we thank you, God. Because we know we can't do it by ourselves, oh Lord. All the medicine in the world, all the doctors in the world can do nothing without your blessing, oh Lord. Lord, we say thank you right now, God. We ask that you just bless everyone under the sound of my voice right now, oh God. Those in the sanctuary and those online, God. God, I ask that you touch households right now, oh God. Right now, touch God. finances, oh God. God, Jesus. we ask that you just touch marriages, touch, touch relationships, touch, oh touch. Lord. Lord, we ask that you touch children, God. Touch, we ask that between children and parents are just increased right now, oh God, that we can communicate with one another, oh God. God, we ask that you, you, you just strengthen us, oh God, that we may lift up your holy name, oh God, because you are worthy to be praised, God. God, you and only you, oh God, so as we lift you up, as we magnify your name, oh God, we ask that you come into this place right now, oh God. Be with us, oh God. God, help us to please bless our teacher, our pastor, oh God, as he continues to preach and teach the word, oh God. God, but we thank you that after being in the world, being touched by the world all this week, oh God, that we can come to your sanctuary, oh God, and learn a little bit more about you, Lord. So we say thank you right now, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, Mount Isley. We've already had such a great worship experience. Let's continue to worship the Lord together. For you online, feel free to lift up your hands and to praise the Lord on, with us. You. As we unify together to bless the name of the Lord, we welcome you in this place, oh God, to inhabit the praises of your people, oh Lord. We love you on today. So we lift up our hands, we open up our mouths, oh God, we pour out ourselves unto you. For you are worthy. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for being good, for being just, for being sovereign. So we ask you to have your way in this place, oh God. Oh. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Have your
everybody pray. Release your healing. Come on, Lord, we need your healing right now, God. In the name of Jesus, release it, God. Release your healing in this place of God. Oh, yo. 
song to stand up on your feet. One more time. Come oh, on, help us sing. God help us sing. Is able to do this. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going up the heart every, every promise unto you. Hey, hey, don't give up on God.
don't give up on God For he won't give up on you Don't give up on God For he won't give up on you Hey Don't give up on God No, 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 no Hey Don't give up on God For he won't
Father, you've been so good. You've been so great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Watch this. Listen, all you got to do is just prepare and listen. Listen. I want you to prepare. We're going to fill this sanctuary with a shout of victory. You ain't got to shout at the top of your lungs. But I need you to get ready to just open up your mouth and let a holy sound come out. Let a sound of worship come out. The Bible says make a joyful noise before the Lord. Come on, I need you to get ready. I need you to get ready. When you shout and release, something is about to happen in this atmosphere. Come on, I need you to get everything that has been holding you back. I need you to get everything that has been holding you down. What has kept you bound. And I need you to get ready to shout it out right now. When you shout, you are releasing your healing. When you shout, you are releasing your deliverance. When you shout, relationships are about to be mended. I feel it. Come on, I feel it. I feel it. I want you to get it in your mind. You're about to let go right now. Come on, focus, focus. See it, see it. See what you're about to let go right now. Come on. Come on, see it, see it, see it. Can you see it? Can you see it? Are you ready? See, y'all Y'all ain't ready to let it go. That's what's wrong. You ain't ready to let it go. But I need some folks who got some stuff. You really ready to let go and release some, some doctors. Diagnosis. We about to let it go right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, get ready, 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 get ready. That's all you gotta do. Just whatever comes out your mouth right now, just open up your mouth. If it's thank you, just say thank you. If it's hallelujah, shout hallelujah. If it's a joy for nine, just say oh. Come on, cry out to the Lord right now. Hey! I'm crying out for Mother Kirkland right now. Hey! Cry out for my cousin right now. Hey! Is I'm so large standing in the need of prayer. Hey! I dare you call it out. Come on, cry out to him right now. Whatever you need is right here, right now. Hey! Hey! thank you for your power God we thank you for your presence God we thank you that you never left us we thank you that you always been right there God with the breath in our bodies we're going to worship you God the ability of our voices, we will open up our mouths and give you a joyful noise, a joyful praise, a, a shout of celebration, God, a, a shout of adoration. God, we adore you, God. We love you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We shall thank you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Anybody know that God is good? Come on, do you know that he's better than good? Do you know we serve a great God? Come on, don't play with me. Do you know we serve an awesome God?
Come on, do you know we serve a mighty God? Come on, has he made a way for anybody? You didn't know how you were going to make it. Didn't know how it was going to work out. But over and over and over and over again, I should have been dead. I don't know how I'm here right now. Angels bow before him. Come on. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. We got to move on. Said I wouldn't want a religion I couldn't feel sometimes. Say thank you. And we say thank you, Lord. I'm trying to move on, I'm trying to move on. Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. Lord, we don't even know everything we ought to thank you for. But for what we do know, Lord, we say thank you right now. On the count of three, on the count of three, we're going to bring the music down and just, we're going to try to move on. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of the Lord and And all that is done, that is done, that is done, that is done. I can't help but say thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, we got to move on. We got to move on. Come on, sister. If you're excited about what God is doing in your life right now, 
Anybody else excited? I didn't ask you to shout. You ain't got to clap your hands. I want you to know in yourself, are you excited about what God is doing right now? Anybody feel God doing something? Come on, anybody feel God? Come, don't, don't, don't. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, God. Uh, yeah, look with so overjoyed and so overwhelmed I just get filled up anybody just get filled up by the Lord mm. I know we gotta go y'all but God, let's give God some praise and let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Let's put our hands together and receive our ministry updates. Deborah McCray, amen. We welcome you on this fourth Sunday of January, January the 23rd, 2022, where we here at the Mount Ali Baptist Church thank God for grace. We thank him for mercy and his unconditional love. Right. Highlighting our church theme for the year 2022, the year of teaching and witnessing transformation, miracles, signs, and wonders. And our scripture is from Romans, the 12th chapter and the second verse. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Please uplift the following persons during your prayer time. Christy Creighton, Patricia Warren, Janet Stevens, a special prayer for Mildred Royster who has been hospitalized. Beverly McCants Gent, our dear Eleanor Kirkland, Anna Lee Baker, Evelyn Jenkins, Virginia and Ernest I. We ask that you continue to keep the small family in your prayer as we celebrated Susan Small's homegoing service on last Friday. Also, the Thomas family, along with the family of the slain office, police officer and healing prayers for the second officer that was shot on Friday evening. We sorrowfully announce that heaven has opened its doors and our beloved mother, Aletha Venable, has joined the angels. Mother relocated with her son Calvin to South Carolina a few years ago. Mother Venable joined this church in 1945, which would make her a member for 77 years. We do not have any arrangements, information just yet. Rest in peace, Mother. Randy, happy birthday on Thursday coming. Our ministry updates. Tuesday, January the 25th, we will have our 12 noon Bible study on the prayer line and 7.30 p.m. Bible study on our Zoom call. Wednesday, January the 26th at 6.30 p.m. choir rehearsal. Thursday, January the 27th from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. The community corners will be on prayer line and their phone number 267 -807 Access code 931667-POUND. In an our effort to have your most updated contact information, if you have not done so already, please fill out your 2022 registration card and hand it back to the ushers today. Due to the uprising of COVID numbers because of the Omicron variant, we have had to revert back to seating every other pew. We are also in the process of re-registering everyone's vaccination status. This will entail the actual showing of your vaccination card. As of Sunday, February the 6th, if you have not been vaccinated and you want to come to the sanctuary, you must bring a 72-hour negative COVID test document with you. Today, after service, if you have your vaccination card with you, please stop by the choir room on your way out of the building we will have a team there to view your cards. 
As we never want to have to turn anyone away from service, we ask that everyone please comply as our main goal here is to keep everyone safe. Please continue all precautions to keep you and your family safe, especially our children. As it has been reported that the numbers are declining, believe me, in our area, the numbers are spiking. Continue having a blessed day. God bless. Thank you. Man, amen, 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 amen. We are grateful. Again, we do have some rapid tests here, rapid PCR. We bought a few. I don't want to turn nobody away. Uh, we are waiting. We think over the next few days the numbers will go down. Just telling everybody I know. I don't know how. Well, I can't say that, but I can't say it from the mic. If we could turn off the live stream, there's some stuff I could say, but I ain't going to say that. <laughs> Let me say this. We're going to be in church until Jesus or the government shut us down. Amen. I ain't going nowhere. If you're scared, just don't come. It's cool. If you're a leader, I expect you to be here, though. But if you're scared, just don't come. I don't like scary people coming with me because <clears throat> I need somebody to holler at me. Scary people to get you jumped and get you beat up. <laughs> How many of y'all know every Sunday we come in here going to war? Every Sunday we are in here spiritually going to war. And if you scared, stay home because you might get me shot. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. But, but if we believe that God is who we believe God is. We got to demonstrate it. One of the worst things I heard somebody say, a new believer who was criticizing their church and their pastor, said, I just came to belief, but the Jesus I read about is more powerful than COVID-19. So how y'all been in here 30, 40, 50 years? I just came to the Lord three weeks ago, but I'm trying to go to the house of the Lord, and y'all scared sitting at home. That ain't going to be our testimony, Mount Island. In the name of Jesus. Now, God has given us good sense and common sense, and we're going to use both of them, Deacon McCann's. Good sense and common sense to protect ourselves because there's too much at stake, but we will continue to have church. Matter of fact, I think it's almost time to start a second service. The musician's eyes got real big right there. We praying about it. We praying. We praying. Amen. But I'm telling you, they coming. They coming. Will y'all help me? I figured out a way to get us some camera operators. I got Samantha and Angel and Josh. And I'm going to get one or two more. Matthew, don't be ducking down. I'm paying $20 a Sunday to work the camera. All right? All right? $20 a Sunday. You on your way up? You need to sign up. I didn't say $20 an hour. I said $20 a Sunday. But listen, if you're not on time, you're getting docked. Do something wrong, and hit you like James Brown. Gonna have a Jesus good time. $50, huh? Gonna have a party. Huh. Yeah. We, uh. Gonna have a Jesus good time. Y'all ain't ready. Come on now. Here we go. Listen, y'all. We are excited. I want to pause right now to celebrate. I believe it's the... Oh, watch out now. Watch out. Celebrate the Brooklyn chapter of Alpha... Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. What's the name of the chapter that came out with us? That was this Monday, right? Was that this Monday? Weeks is running into each other. This Monday, Martin Luther King Day, we're grateful. Had a phenomenal turnout. Go online, you can see the video. They did that. Want to thank the brothers, the Ice Cold Brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, the second or third, depending on who you ask, but they ain't the first. Phi New Pi, K A Psi. Frat so nice, we named it twice. New, new. Amen. As we keep it moving. Amen. Listen, y'all. 
We're excited about what God is doing. We have some exciting things on the horizon. God has been opening doors. God is doing a new thing. Anybody got a testimony and is marvelous in our sight. We're excited about what God is doing. We know that it is going to take our continual work, effort, and prayer. But anyone who is not a tither, anyone who is not a tither, not a tither, this is what I want you to do. I want you to start tithing a tither for your time in prayer for the church and the ministry. Amen? Can y'all do that? Somebody say, what does that look like? All right. If I make $100, my tithe is... Y'all got to say it to my good ears. What? $10. $10. That's all God asked for. So if I'm not in a position right now where I can't tithe my money, everybody in this church is going to be a tithing member. You're either going to tithe, tithe your money, your talent, or your time. You can tithe your time in prayer. Can we all come to that agreement? I hear five people saying yes, but ain't nobody moving their hands. You ought to tell the truth and shame the devil. If you can't do it, what does a time of your what does a tithe of your time look like? This is all I'm asking. I ain't even gonna make you calculate it. Really, 24 hours in a day, a tithe is two hours and 24 minutes. Two hours and 24 minutes. Is what you should be spending every day if you're giving God a tithe of your time. How can you do that? You can get 30 minutes on the prayer line. Huh? Help me somebody. And then you only got to do whatever 30 minutes is minus 2 hours and 24 minutes. <laughs> but in all seriousness, if you can't tithe, this is what I'm asking you. Over the next, between now and, and, and the end of February, I need you to be praying extra hard. We got some things that we need to be doing. Amen over the next 30, 30 to 60 days. So I'm asking those time, talent, treasure to help partner with us in this ministry. Amen? All right. If our hearts and minds are clear, uh, we know what's next. Uh, we're having a meeting with youth leaders after service. Also, if you have some ideas, why don't you come talk to me after service. We're getting ready to do our all-hands team, uh, getting ready to get started. A lot of exciting things have been you know, freed up, prayer, meditation so God has given me the vision and it's about to get on and popping up in Brownsville in Brooklyn amen all right y'all know what time it is you know what time it is you know what time it is it's offering time it's offering time it's offering time I cannot grow if I don't sow it how can I grow it I got a bare spot of grass by my house. And I go out there and look, waiting for that grass to grow. Then the revelation came, you ain't putting no seed in the ground. How you looking for a harvest when you haven't planted a seed? That's all this is. This is about you more than it is about God. God just want to see if you trust him. I don't need to say much else. One place in the Bible, he says, try me and see if I will not throw open the windows of heaven pour you out a blessing that you do not have room enough to receive. So I'm asking you, tithe your time, your talent, your treasure. What is your tithe of your talent? If you got a nice smile, tell somebody about your church. Matter of fact, I want to do something right now. Ushers, go sit down, please. Ushers, go sit down. I know y'all mad. I want to open the doors of the church. I want to open the doors of the church. Come on, deacons. Anybody want to give your life to the Lord? This is how we know if we've been doing work throughout the week. People should come ready to give their life to the Lord. So this is what we're going to start doing. We're going to start opening service, opening the doors of the church. And we're going to close service, opening the doors of the church. We have done our work throughout the week. When we open the doors of the church, people are going to come. Amen. All right. I got y'all attention. I got y'all attention. 
I don't want to have to stand up here week after week. We open the doors of the church and it's just me and deacons. Amen. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Visually, we got to put in the work, y'all. People are ready to come. We got to pray and put in the work. Amen. You come to join? Come on, give God some praise. Come on, come on, come on. My sister, some of the sisters come down. I need a few sisters to come down. Come on, Sister Grace. Come on. Tasha. Come on. Come on. Come on. Is there another? Is there another right now? Give your life to Christ. Join Mount Olive Baptist Church. Come on, give God some prayer. Come on down, Sister Pat. Come on, give God some praise right now. Amen. Amen. Y'all go with him. Take him back there. Y'all go back there with him. They're going to pray. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. I know y'all think I'm crazy. I am a little bit. Let me just go ahead and tell you the whole truth. Just a little bit. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to show us something. I'm trying to show us something. Trying to show us something. What God is trying to do. A couple things. We got to shake it up. We can't get so stuck in a routine. So if it don't happen a certain way, something is wrong. Then we don't allow God to move. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is that if work has gone on from Sunday to Sunday, when we open church, there ought to be people ready to join the Lord. Because your witness ought to be so strong that people ought to be waiting all week to come to church just so they can join. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me up in here. I've come to tell you, your testimony is going to do more than any sermon I could ever preach for your friend or for your family members. So we want to get ready. Amen? All right, uh, ushers, let's get ready. Ushers, let's get ready. I think that's about all the off-script stuff I'm going to do today. We're going to preach and we're going to get out of here. We're making good time. 1045, 1145. 1245. Yeah, we're making great time. We're making good, great time. I've committed to try to get us out in two hours or less every Sunday. Two hours or less. Amen? Are uh, the ushers ready? I need my newest usher. Come here, Sister Davis. Come on. Come here, my newest usher. It's my prayer that every ministry has growth this year. Every ministry. Come on. Y'all ain't helping me celebrate don't make me act a fool up in here. Help me celebrate our newest usher. Come on, God be praised. She getting baptized. She has given her life to the, this is ministry. This is what it's about. I need you to help me make some noise. All right. Come on, ushers. Get ready, get ready. Ushers are coming. Let's get your gift in your hand. Get your gift in your hand. If you're like me, you give online. If you give online, or get your envelope. Get your gift in your hand. Get your envelope ready. Get your envelope ready. I want you to get into the practice. I want you to get into the practice. Don't just put in an offering without praying over it yourself first. What kind of seed are you planting in the ground? How crazy do I look planting a cantaloupe seed and going and looking for a watermelon? What does your seed mean to you? What do you need in your life? What are you believing God for? See the seed, see the manifestation. See the seed, 
see the manifestation. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Let me grab my phone. Somebody stole my phone? Oh, here. <laughs> I'm just playing. Y'all know I just be playing. Come on, let's get ready to pray. Everybody got something to put in today? God, I'm trying to tell y'all. Everybody got something to do? Everybody, everybody close your eyes. Close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Every eye closed. Please hear me. Every eye closed. If you don't have at least a dollar something to put in today, raise your hand. Every eye closed. So can't nobody see it but me. If you need something to put in today, I want everybody to put something in the offer today. Raise your hand. Eyes are closed. Nobody going to see but me. Eyes are closed. No one will see but me. No one will see but me. No one will see but me. If you need something, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Eyes closed. Eyes closed. Eyes closed. Eyes closed. All right. On the count of three, everybody open your eyes. One, two, three. Amen. Let me tell you the reason why we need to give God praise right now. Not a single hand went up. Nobody who didn't have something to put into the house. Come on. Y'all don't know when to shout. Y'all don't know when to praise. See, I know we used to shout, God gave me a new car. But can you bless God for somebody else's blessing? Can you thank God that there have been times when hands have went up all over the sanctuary, when folks didn't even have a dollar, but not a single hand went up because God is moving, God can be trusted, God is true, and you can take him at his word. So Lord, we thank you now that what we have are seeds in our hands. We are believing you for an abundant, a supernatural. God, I see it in the spirit realm. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Minds have not even contemplated the great things that you are about to do. Why? Because we trust you. So Lord, now we take these seeds. We sow them in fertile ground. Believing you now for an abundant harvest. But God, this is what different, this is what's different about us. We used to want the harvest for us. But we thank you for the spiritual maturity to now the harvest ain't about us. But Lord, we want to be blessed, Reverend Munderlin, to be a blessing to somebody else. And we thank you. If that's your prayer, you ought to help me tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. And in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen again. Come on, ushers. Bless us, Sister Candy.
Nobody greater, nobody greater, greater than our God. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater, greater than our God. We searched out your love and couldn't find nobody greater, greater than our God. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater. Greater than our God, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater, greater than our God, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater, greater than our God, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater, greater than our God, nobody greater. Nobody greater, nobody greater, greater than our God. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater, greater than our God. And we say, God, great God, worthy of honor and glory. Stand here in reverence, blessing your presence, behold. How many of you know we serve a great God? Praise the Lord. So I was asked to do a sermonic selection. Y'all pray for me, okay? Because y'all see I'm up here by myself. But God is good. And y'all sound beautiful. Thank you for helping me on today, okay? God is good. It's so wonderful to be able to come and fellowship with you guys and worship with you guys. Something happens when you're in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says when two or three are gathered that he would be in the midst. So I thank God for allowing his presence to reign in this place on this morning. Anybody grateful? Anybody grateful? I'm grateful too. Hallelujah.
For those of you who have your Bibles, if you will turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through 18. Help me thank God, Sister Candia. Now, I'm blessing us today. Has her ministry blessed anybody beside me? Her ministry blessed? Lord, put it on my heart today. If she's been a blessing and you want to sow a seed into her life today, if she's been a blessing to you, you want to sow a seed into her life today, I invite you to do that if the Lord puts it on your heart. Amen. 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 This is what the word of the Lord reads from 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And it is appropriately called 2 Corinthians, not 2 Corinthians. Okay. <laughs> because in fact, it is Paul's second letter yes. to the church at Corinth. Amen. If it was 2 Corinthians, that would seem to suggest there were two churches at Corinth. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through 18 from the New King James Version of the Bible. This is what the word of the Lord reads. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. We can use boldness of speech. Why? Because we got great hope. All right. Now, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains, unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts. Nevertheless, when one, what's that word right there? Turns. Nevertheless, when one, help me y'all, turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. When you turn to the Lord, the veil is taken taken away. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is are y'all reading it with me? Where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. liberty. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. What a powerful expression. From glory to glory. Just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. If I had to partner, you may be seated in the presence of God. We know the word of God is already blessed. We had to partner this particular text with uh, thematic scripture of Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 2, which I'll give to you real quick. I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye... You can help me preach a little bit. Transformed by what? The renewing. Look at somebody tell them, get your mind right. Get your mind right. By, by the renewing, by the getting your mind right. This is what I discovered about this, though, y'all. Well, I discovered, well, I discovered. In this text, y'all know why God has been breaking me down? God has been showing me. The Negro, it ain't about you. I could have said some other stuff. I gave you the politically correct one, Sister DuPont. I, 
Watch, 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 watch what a mature faith and a mature relationship with God. God start talking to you a little bit differently. See, in the infancy of our faith, God got to deal with us gingerly, tenderly. Come on, you know how it is. When you are new, that's why I get so angry when new people come into the church if we don't treat them gingerly and tenderly. A new person sitting in your seat, don't say nothing, just sit somewhere else. God is just as good on the left side as he is on the right side. Y'all ain't going to help me in this place. But, 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 but there is an expectation that when, when something or someone is new, you deal with it a little bit differently. But, but as the sun continues to rise and set, as you watch the time keep on rolling, help me somebody, that there ought to be the evidence of the maturation. And God just starts speaking to me differently. He said that the challenge that you thought it was about you, but I need you to tell my people it ain't never been about y'all. It's all been about my work in you. Y'all ain't going to help me preach up in here that it's always been about my work in you. Watch this. Because when you think it's about you, you slip into works righteousness. Where you can work your way into righteousness and right standing relationship. But watch that. That's not how Christianity is set up. That is not how Christianity is set up. Can I argue from the text for just a few moments? Now, what is this whole notion? Now, that I want us to systematically, I want to I educate us on understanding how we come to Christ. Okay. It's my sincere belief that if I can help us to understand better our faith walk and our faith journey, then I can tell somebody else about it. And then now I am better positioned to go out and be a witness for the Lord because I can't witness what I ain't ever seen. I cannot witness what I have not experienced. I cannot witness what I have not learned. That's why they make you take an oath before you rise to the witness stand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Watch. Here it is. Here it is. That in God's system, in the system in your house, there was always a system of rules and laws I didn't get enough amens let your 16 year old daughter come home at 1 o'clock in the morning you're going to learn there's some rules real quick <laughs> somebody said lock the door change the locks no don't do that to your daughter but this is the problem in every watch this watch this in every human situation, there are laws, rules, a system of governance. Now, it is the law or the system that is designed that tells us what is allowed and what is prohibited. When you drive down the street, you see the posted speed limit. To tell you how fast to go and how slow you can go. Depending on view of the highway. What does it do? Because there is a system that has been set up and the system only functions if people follow the rules. Amen. 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 Your house only functions well when people... Oh, y'all preaching good now. When people what? Follow the rules. Because when the rules are not followed, what happens? It causes disruptions, disturbance, chaos. Things get out of whack. Now, when there is a system and rules set up, watch this, y'all. Every day I make a choice to either follow the law. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I'm going to break the law. I'm going to transgress the law. But I can't break it without a conscious choice. 
Watch this, y'all. Are y'all tracking with me? You made a choice to eat the last cookie out the cookie jar. When you know they asked you to save that cookie, that was a choice. You made a choice not to put the toilet seat down when you knew that was her pet peeve. I wish I had a little help up in here. You either choose to do something in the case of eating the last cookie or you choose to not do something by not putting the toilet seat down. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That the laws are set in place because a system has been designed to achieve an end goal. System has been placed to achieve an end goal. They set speed limits based upon the curvature of angles to keep you from killing yourself. And when you drive too fast, what happens? You put yourself at risk. So here it is, brothers and sisters, watch this. In a system where laws, rules, and regulations are in place, we are left with a choice. Now, under that choice, watch this, that your standing is directly connected to your choice to obey that law, to obey that law. We had a situation here at the church where our church bylaws have set up that if you have not attended communion consistently or missed like three consecutive communions, you're what? Not in good standing. Yeah, that's true. That's why you need to know the laws and know the rules. Three. Uno, dos, tres. Ons, mais, keys. I don't know no other languages, but three. One, two, three. Three consecutive Sundays. You're out of good standing, out of fellowship. That's just the laws. Watch this. You're about to make me lose my whole point. Y'all know it don't take much. I get, uh, man. Your standing. Let me come down. Your standing. But I need my notes. Your standing. They ain't messed me up. The Holy Ghost got me. Your standing. Your standing is directly connected to your choice to obey or disobey the law. When you chose not to show up for three consecutive first Sunday communion, you made a choice. Watch this. Therefore, your standing according to the laws is based on the choice that you made. So as you make choices, your standing under the law is either improved or it's worsened. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But here's the key. There was a choice. Now this is where faith comes in. See, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant was a system of laws. And according to my obedience, I appreciate that. Man, don't be running up on me like that, William Brown. <laughs> I ain't know what was happening. I just saw people looking. I was about to reach. Don't make me do it. I ain't got nothing but a pen in my pocket. <laughs> they don't know that. They don't know that. Amen. Listen, but watch this. In the Old Testament, your relationship with God was based upon your observance of the law. So to be in right relationship, I had to be doing the right thing. And when I was doing the wrong thing, I was out of good standing and right standing. So something had to be done to make up the difference, to get me back right. Now, here's the problem. Paul puts it best. The good that I would do. Wish I had a little help in here. I'm trying. Sister Phillips, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, trying to do the best I can. But Paul said... The good that I would do is real hard. But, but, but the evil that I'm trying not to do, Sister Dina, I, I'm trying my best, Lord, says it's always present with me. And what he says is almost like a civil war is happening on the inside of me. I woke up this morning. I'm going to listen to gospel music. Somebody riding down the street and I heard Jeezy. 
I heard Drake. I'm just giving an example. This ain't Reggie. This ain't Pastor Backus. But what? You get distracted and you get pulled away even though you have good intentions. Your execution is not always there. And the question is raised why? That we are, as Paul says, we have been slaves to sin. So you're slave. Oh, come on now. A slave can't do nothing but be a slave. But whom the son sets free is free to do what? To make a choice. So now I'm no longer slave to my sin. I choose to sin. Y'all praying with me? So my standing is directly connected to my choice under the old covenant, under the Old Testament, under the old relationship. And a sacrifice would have to be made to get me back right again, Sister Weston. When I done wrong, Lord ever blesses me with a wife again. I hope I don't do wrong, but if I do, I know I got to come home with flowers. Why y'all clapping so hard in the back? Y'all clapping about me getting married again or coming home with flowers? I ain't figured that part out yet. Y'all need to stop it in the name of Jesus right now. Leave me alone. The Lord got me. Listen, here we go. Here we go. There got to be something to restore the relationship. Anybody thank God that we had the one time all atoning sacrifice by the name of Jesus who was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. All right, we got the, we, we got the, we got the, we got the foundation. Watch this. So what that means is, is that the system of the law, can you hear now what Paul is talking about in this text? When he says that your eyes have been blinded, have been veiled because you thought you were still under the law. You thought it was still about you. Your goodness. Your righteousness. Your ability to get it right. And what he says is that as long as you think it's about you, you're blind. You blind. Walking around in darkness. But I'm so glad ever since I came to know Jesus. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. And here it is. Listen to what he says. That as long as they're listening to the Old Testament, the veil is there. But watch what he says. That in Christ, the veil is taken away. In Christ. The veil is taken away. In Christ, now I can see. In Christ, now I... Hand me that hat right there. In Christ, hand me something. Hand me that hat right there. Can I use your hat, Brother Phil? In Christ. So this is your choice. Walk around like this. Or walk around and be able to see for the rest of your life. Like this. Keep bumping her through life, stumping your toe, knocking your shins, cussing and fussing, when all you had to do was pull down the veil. Now, what does that look like? Paul says in the text that when you turn to Christ, the veil is taken away. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. It says when you turn to Christ. Now watch this. Turning to Christ is turning away from yourself. Turning to Christ is turning away from yourself. If any man shall follow me, let him deny himself. And pick up his cross daily and follow me. Watch this. Watch this. That what Christ is asking, what God is pleading, is that you quit giving me your shoulder. 
Quit, quit, quit giving me the cold shoulder. Quit giving me just a part of you, but I dare you turn fully to me. Watch this, because as long as you're here, see, you only seeing me out of your peripheral vision. I can see Sister McCullough back there with my peripheral vision, but I can't fully see her until I turn and look at her. Watch this, because I can only focus on one thing at a time. And how do I expect ever to see God if I don't first turn to Jesus? And in the turning to Jesus, watch what the Bible says. Then the veil will be taken away. And what does it start with? I have to make the choice. Only choice you are expected to make, like definitive, for real, for real, is the choice that I'm going to turn to Jesus. What does that look like? This is where prayer comes in. This is where prayer comes in. This is what I've discovered, y'all. That the greatest changes in my life happened not because I was so good. Not because I was so disciplined. Not because I had put the structure I thought I needed in my life. Not because of some relationships I was in or no longer in. But you know when the real change came? When I turned to Jesus. And in the turning, what I realized is that I couldn't do it on my own. So what I had to do was what? Surrender. Get out of the way. Let God have God's way. Watch this. Watch this. Now, this, this is the thing. What does that look like in terms of the turning to Christ and the releasing of the veil? I want to talk about three things about the veil. We're going we're to keep this going. That in the text, what it's talking about is the veil of Moses, the veil of the temple, and the veil of the law. Three veils. I may not get to all of them right now. Matter of fact, I might just close right here because y'all good already, right? Y'all got it. Three veils. The veil of Moses, the veil of the temple, and the veil of the law. The veil of Moses, the veil of the temple, and the veil of the law. The veil of Moses, Exodus 3, 33 and 34. Exodus 33 and 34. I'm going to get ready to wrap up, but I want to give you some scriptures to go home and study. We talked about it on Tuesday night. Exodus chapter 33, verse 34, is where Moses has made a request of God. He says, God, in order for me to keep leading your people, I need to see your glory. Can I see your glory? This is what Moses knew, that if I could see God's glory, God's glory will be seen all over me. Somebody missed that. If I can see God's glory, God's glory will be seen all over me. And in the establishment of his leadership, leading the people to the promised land, watch what Moses realized that as long as they looking and depending on me, we ain't going to get there. But Lord, in me as their leader, I want to see your glory. So when they see me as their leader, they don't see me, but they see your glory. Y'all praying with me. In Exodus chapter 33, he asks him for it. In Exodus chapter 34, it happens. What God says is that my glory, the full outpouring and splendor of my glory is so magnificent that if you see it, you're going to die. You can't look upon it. Because the light is too bright. Ooh, I feel the power of God in this place. Listen. Listen. What God said is, listen, I understand according to your mission, I understand what you said, that you want to see my glory so they can see my glory in you and on you. So what God says is, listen, this is what I want you to do. I'm going to pass all the way in front of you. And I'm going to hide you in the cleft, in the corner and crevice of this rock. When I call out to you, I want you to come out, and all you're going to see is the backside of my glory. Oh, bless his holy name. Listen, li listen, listen to what he said, that, that, that all you can see is the backside of my glory and just the train and the tail. It's almost like an airplane 
and you can't see the airplane, but you just see the smoke. God said, my glory is so big and so great. You can't see the plane. You just see the fading smoke and the fading glory. But watch this. When it happened in chapter 34, God calls Moses to come out the cliff. I mean, Moses. Is it Moses? God causes Moses to come out of the cliff. I'm just making sure y'all paying attention. God calls Moses to come out the cliff. Watch this. And in the flash of glory. The instant where God's full splendor and majesty and brilliance and radiance and glory fell over Moses, it says his entire countenance changed. He was shining. The presence and the glory of God had so impacted everything on him. Watch this. And this is what I love. That when you spend time in the presence of God, you don't even know the glory that's being reflected on you. Because in chapter 34, it says Moses didn't even know that he was shining. Watch this. But he was shining so much that people who had saw him a few days earlier started tucking tail and running because they wasn't sure what was. I'm trying to tell you that God's glory will fall so heavily on you and your life you won't even know it but folks will look and say Felicia you look different. Mundelin you look different. Sister Kennedy you look different and you don't even know why. Because you were focused on his glory see when you focus on God's glory you ain't focused on the attention you ain't focused on the pride you ain't you ain't focused on all those other things all I want is the Lord's glory and the Lord's glory will take care of everything seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his right and all of these things will be added unto you hear now the voice of God told him that my glory would be too much, but I'm going to give you a preview. Watch this. And it was so bright that Moses had to cover his face. Now, what is talking about in the text? That we speak with boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who had to hide his face. See, one of the reasons, watch this, y'all. This is a shout. Mm. God be hallelujah, glory to God. That, that one of the reasons, huh, yeah, Moses is interpreted by Paul is hiding his face in the presence of the people is because the glory of God that he experienced was temporary in nature. It was a fading glory. Yeah. The other day I went to get my nails done trying to work on being a pastor, looking like a pastor, acting like a pastor. I even wore church shoes today, but it just didn't feel comfortable, so I had to put some tennis shoes back on. But one of the things is, when you go to the nail shop, one of the ladies, the ladies they ask you, do you want polish on your nails? So now I'm a country boy from Kansas. I ain't putting no polish on my nails. You do what you do, but polish on my nails ain't for me. You do what you do, but that ain't for me. I said, but I tell you what you can do. You can buff it. Now, buff it, give it a little bit of shine. Just a little bit. But it ain't nail polish on a man's nails, which is a whole nother thing. But it do look good, Sister Campbell. This is the problem with getting your nails buffed. It only lasts for a little while. That, that, <laughs> I'm gonna have to let y'all stop talking. Y'all got, Y'all be saying some wild stuff sometimes. But I know that's my fault because I probably started it. But we're going to stay focused. But listen, you notice over time that the glory fades. It's not forever. It's not permanent. So when Moses was hiding his face, it's because he knew that his exposure to the glory of God pre-Christ was only temporary. And it was a fading thing. And he didn't want the people to lose faith and confidence in God 
when they saw the fading of the glory. But notice what he says is that we don't have that issue where we have to worry about the fading of God's glory because it ain't going nowhere. Why? Because when you turn to Christ, now the veil has been taken away and you can look at me 24-7, 365, and it is my prayer that you still see the full glory of God. Be ye transformed. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by getting your mind right. veil of Moses that the glory of God could be revealed watch this but not on a temporary basis when you turn to Christ God's glory is going to start to shine in your life that, that's why the call in Romans 12 and 2 is to be a living sacrifice every day I'm reflecting the glory of God the veil of, of Moses, the veil of the temple. In, in Matthew chapter 27, verse 51, it says very plainly that when Jesus breathed out his last, watch this, the veil in the temple. Imagine that this curtain right here is the veil. And behind the veil, I'm feeling very illustrative today. That's just a big word for illustrations. Behind the veil is the holy of holies. Y'all see that light peeking through? I don't want you to look too close, but y'all see there's something back there. Now, as long as the veil is right there, I can't see what's back there. Now, if the veil was to be torn, the question would be raised, is it torn from the bottom or from the top? Now, the veil in the temple was to separate the holy of holies. But what happened is imagine that this was, this was the sanctuary and there would be a veil that ran like that that separated the Ark of the Covenant, which would have all of the sacred, the sacred things, and that above the cherubim it was believed that the presence, the Shekinah glory of God, that really wasn't around in, in Jesus' time, but the Old Testament time of meeting when Moses is talking about the Shekinah glory of God, that it would be a pillar of fire, a pillar of, of, of smoke, of cloud that would be here, but nobody else could see it except for designated times throughout the year. So all I had to do, watch this, was hear that there was glory of God. I had to have somebody else describe to me what was behind the veil. I had to take somebody else's word for it. But when Jesus breathed out his last, the Bible says that the veil in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. The revelation of Jesus Christ, what he's saying is that it had to be God who tore it because nobody else could reach that high. Demonstrating that it was of divine origin that God tore the veil. Why did he tear the veil? Now, so that he no longer was hid. Now, you didn't need Pastor Bacchus to tell you about Jesus. You can get to know him for yourself. Now, I don't need no turtle dove to get me back right, but I can just get down on my knees. Have a little talk with Jesus. Won't he make everything? I said, all right. Yeah, I, I got to go. I got to go. But, but listen, the veil of the temple, why? Because God said, I want you to see me for me. Yes, yes. I'm tired of you hearing secondhand. Yes, yes. But I want you to see me for me. I'm going to finish the third veil next week. Right. We're going to get out of here. But listen, watch this. What's the point? What's the point? Why do we need the veils taken away? Because God said, I want you to see me for myself. Yes. Yes. I got a bad reputation now here. And I need you to see me because you've been seeing me through messed up church folks. Y'all ain't going to like this point. You, you, you've been seeing me through mean-hearted church folks. Territorial church folks. Filthy, foul, phony, fugazi. Fraudulent, fickle. Messed up folks. 
But Jesus is saying in this season, I want you to see me for myself. God is saying, I want you to see me for myself. Now watch this. When you start seeing him, the more I see him, the more I love about him. And, 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 and the more I get to know him, the more I find myself shouting, dancing, singing, living different. I knew I'd get y'all on them first ones. I got about three amens on that next one. But what do you want to do? You want to see Jesus. You want to see him in an unveiled way. You don't like nobody else. Anybody besides me hate when somebody describe you to somebody else so when they meet you, they already got a preconceived notion of who you are. Like, Negro, you don't know me. You don't know me. I can hear God saying, y'all know me. But I'm giving you a chance. Just turn to me. And in the turning, watch this, the glory to glory comes. I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. I'm going to two things and we're going to go because I want you to fully get the message. What is the turning? The turning is just saying, Lord, I surrender. Yes. Yes. All God wants you to do is pray about it. Amen. I have discovered I couldn't make the change. But when I started sincerely praying, God made the change in me. Some stuff I wouldn't do for a million dollars now I would have done for free. Ain't enough money in the world to make me do some of the stuff I would have done for free. Some mindsets and mentality. When I look back over it, I am offended at myself. But y'all got to understand my story and where I came from. It's some stuff that I think differently about now that I never thought in my life I would look differently on and think differently about. But when I started praying, God changed my heart. God, make me a better Christian so I can be a better pastor for your people. I started praying. I got to end here. But listen, what happens, y'all? I'm done. I'm done. I feel like closing. Come on, Phil. Yes, sir. Let's get on up out of here. It's a good Baptist church. Y'all going to help me. Did y'all enjoy the message? Uh -huh. You ought to help me close on and... Get on out of here on this Sunday morning. But if the Lord has been good to you, is there anybody who don't mind uh, showing your witness? Uh, there may be somebody in the sanctuary right now who is hanging on the fence uh, but you didn't go through all that you went through for you to keep it to yourself I don't know about y'all but I'm so glad that it kept me through all that he's kept me from you may not understand my story may not understand my praise but that's all right with me y'all because i've seen them for myself and i stop by here to tell somebody and the more you see him the more you'll start to worship and praise have you ever wondered why the bible says and the 24 elders, they take off their uh, crowns and throw them at the altar of God. And they throw them at the throne. The Bible says that the angels, uh, they bow down and worship before him. You want to know why the angels bow and worship the way that they do? Because the angels have an unobstructed view of God. Y'all don't hear me today. What that simply means is that nothing gets in the way. Y'all gonna look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. Have you ever uh, woke up early in the morning? Uh, 
and couldn't quite see clearly. I didn't know where you were. I didn't know what was going on. Um, but the more I just kept rubbing, uh, wiping the cold and the sleep out my eye, uh, the clearer my vision became. Um, and the better I could see, um, the more evidence I had to tell the Lord, thank you. Uh, I woke up that morning. Uh, couldn't see when I first looked, uh, but I just kept on rubbing uh, and I kept on wiping uh, and that what I couldn't see. Uh, I started to see clearly now uh, and the clearer that I could see, uh, the more I started to give God praise. Uh, maybe I can run down the road uh, and see if I hit your list. Uh, I started wiping my eyes uh, and I looked around myself. Uh, and the sheets of my bed uh, what my cooling sheets of a mortuary uh, I had to tell them thank you uh, kept rubbing my eyes uh, and I looked around uh, and the four walls of my room uh, were not the four walls of a casket uh, I had to tell them thank you sir uh, thank you Lord uh, and I kept rubbing my eyes uh, the more I started rubbing my eyes, I, I looked down and I had pajamas on. I had to think about it uh, and I started giving God praise uh, cause my polo pajamas uh, could have been a new suit. Uh, laying up in Samson's funeral home, uh, I looked at my clothes uh, and they weren't my casket clothes. Uh, and I had to tell him thank you. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna help me praise him. Uh, I kept on rubbing, uh, kept on letting the veil come down. Uh, everywhere I looked, uh, I saw more evidence. Uh, I went downstairs, uh, made a little coffee, uh, and I started to drink it. Uh, I had to thank the Lord uh, that I woke up in my right mind uh, to know that I wanted coffee. Uh, not only to know that I wanted it, uh, but I knew how to make the coffee. Uh, and I had to tell him thank you. Uh, then I started thinking about um, when I had COVID-19. Um, didn't know if I was going to make it. Um, I couldn't taste um, and I couldn't smell. Um, I put my brown raw sugar um, in my coffee. Um, I started sipping my coffee. Um, and I started realizing um, that there was a time I couldn't taste. Um, so I started telling the Lord, thank you. Because I can taste right now. Um, Y'all see where I'm going with it? Um, my shout ain't going to make you shout. Um, but I dare somebody um, to make up in your mind uh, I'm going to think of the goodness um, The goodness of the Lord uh, And all that he's done uh, And when I think on his goodness uh, I can't help but praise him uh, The Bible says that the angels bow down Bow down before him uh, the reason they keep on bowing uh, is that every time uh, they bow down to worship, uh, they lift the veil, uh, they see God, uh, they see one more reason uh, to give him praise. Uh, they bow down again, uh, look up again, uh, I thank you for your goodness, uh, bow down again, uh, look up again. Uh, Thank you for your mercy. Uh, they bow down again. Um, look up again. Uh, I thank you for your love. Uh, they bow down again. Uh, look up again. Uh, I don't know what you thank him for, but a thanks uh, goes right here. Uh, a praise uh, goes right here. Uh, a shout. Uh, goes right here uh, you better shout uh, and shout it out uh, cause when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done my soul my soul ah!
the more I start to think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done, my soul said yes. Yeah. bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth because he's continually worthy he's worthy y'all he's worthy you wonder why I shout because the veil has fallen I can see clearly now I can worship in new ways I can praise them I can tell them thank you Oh, bless his holy name. The unveiled God. The unveiled God. The unveiled God. That's what we're going towards. Getting to know the unveiled God so we see Jesus for himself. We see God for himself. We are free. It's a whole lot of pressure thinking that it's all about you whole lot of pressure thinking you can change it you can get it right God is like what you need a God for if you could do it yourself all I'm asking you to do is just pray you know we playing games be serious anybody else can admit there were some prayers I couldn't pray at certain points in my life because I knew I wasn't serious but I'm trying to tell you God is real just trust him just turn to him. Say, Lord, I'm going to let you do what you do. Because you do it so well. As we open the doors of the church for the second time, where's our sister? Our sister, come back now. Come back now. Come back down. We're going to give me a prophet. Doors of church are open. We're also doing altar call. If you want to come for prayer now, you can come. If you want to come for prayer now, if you want to come, I'm trying to tell y'all, prayer make the difference. I have made up in my life, I'm going to quit stressing out. I'm going to quit worrying. I'm just going to pray. Because see, once I pray, it's out of my hands and it's in God's hands. And once I put it in God's hands, if God wanted to come to pass, it's going to come to pass. And if it don't come to pass, it's because it wasn't meant to come to pass. The Bible says, who among us can increase your stature by one cubit, one inch, one centimeter by worrying? I choose not to worry. I choose God. I choose Christ. I choose prayer. My brother, my sister, whoever you are, wherever you are right now, you can come down for prayer. Come on, my sister. You don't have to come to join the church. You don't even, you know, just come candidate for uh, baptism. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you are got a church home, decide you want to join our church. Or maybe you're in a church that ain't opened in two years. You better get you a new church. The altar is open. Is there one who will come? Come prayer. Come on, my sister. Give God some praise. I met my sister at the door. Amen. She came at the door. Bless you, my sister. Come on. Y'all ain't praising God enough. Is there another? Is there another? prayer, give your life to Christ, join this church. Come on, is there another, is there another, come on.
Well, let's get ready to pray. Y'all come around, come around. Let's get ready to pray. Let's get ready to pray. Let's get ready to pray. We got one to join the church and some others for prayer. Come on, get ready, get ready, get ready to to the Lord in prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to be praying now. Be praying now. Be praying. Start praying. Start praying. Lord, make us a church. A church. Your people, God. Get us out the way that you may have your way, God. We thank you. We got a place we can come to week after week. We don't know how your spirit going to move, but we know it's going to move every single week, God. We thank you. We have a spiritual refuge. We got a spiritual gas station. We can come get refueled to get out on the road of life. We thank you, God, that the building next door used to be an auto body shop. We thank you. We're doing some spiritual automotive work right here in the name of Jesus, God. We recalibrating. People getting new engines in the name of Jesus. People getting new paint jobs to where they walk around looking like the glory of God in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. You're doing some internal work. I see hearts changing. We thank you addictions are being put aside in the name of Jesus. We thank you stinking thinking is evaporating, dissipating, and disappearing in the name of Jesus. We thank you we are entering a season where we ain't praying for you to bail us out, but we praying that you take us to higher levels in the name of Jesus. I pray for my sisters who have gathered at this altar. Speak now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Speak in their hearing, God. Sometimes I feel like I got to say it so... Hey, believe with God, you taught me just be quiet. You're going to speak to them right now if they just listen. Just, just listen. Just listen. Just listen. Speak to them now, God, in the name of Jesus. Speak, God. Answer, 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 answer questions in the name of Jesus right now. Answer prayers in the name of Jesus right now, God. Give revelation in the name of Jesus right now, God. Give that peace that surpasses all understanding in the name of Jesus right now, God. Spirit of the living God, fall from the tops of heads right now, God. But Lord, don't let this be like anything we've ever experienced before. Let us feel the sweet, sweet, sweet spirit pull back the veil now God that we may see you we may experience you we may know how real you are we thank you not a single person in this place is going to leave the same way they came 
we thank you we're leaving stronger we thank you we're leaving better we thank you we're leaving healed we're leaving delivered we're leaving God looking more like you from glory to glory God come on we're being transformed from glory to glory God come on we being transformed from glory to glory God we can't go from glory to glory without going to new levels and higher levels. God, we receive it right now. We're being transformed from glory to glory right now, God. Come on, that's the word. From glory to glory right now in the name. Lord, 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 you've shown your glory in some ways. We didn't even realize it was your glory. Lord, pull back the veil and show us now that we may see from glory to glory, God. Hey, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that it's done. We thank you that you've already done it. We thank you that we are walking in the manifestation. We are witnessing your move, your mercy, your grace, and your power. And we've come to declare it is marvelous in our sight. And we say thank you, hallelujah. And all those who believe it triumphantly, shout it out together. Amen, amen. Come on, I dare you give God some praise. Come on, praise him on this side. Praise him on this side. Come on, praise him on this side. Praise him on this side. Praise him before the doctor's report comes back. Praise him before the doctor report comes back. Praise him before it. Now, my sister, come back, come back, come back, come back, come on. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him now, praise him now. We're going to do one last thing. Y'all going to help me thank God for Rashana Price. It's the last thing we're going to do. Sister Price came before the sermon. Lord told me to do that. Watch this. Y'all been depending on the sermon. Don't depend on the sermon. Depend on your testimony. Your witness that most of the work should be done by the time they get here. And if we have done what we supposed to do before the prayer, before the praise and worship, before the scripture, people ought to be coming down saying, what must I do to give my life to Christ? Y'all ain't gonna help me in this place. Before a musical instrument is played, people ought to be running down that aisle because we have told somebody, Sister Felicia Campbell, that God loved me so much that I said I ain't even gonna lose my peace over a grain of rice. Y'all ain't hear me in this place. God is doing it. God is doing it, y'all. So will y'all help me make some Holy Ghost noise for Roshana Price, who is going to be one of the newest members of the Mount Ali Baptist Church in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, 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 hey. Let's give God some praise. This Price is coming as a new member. From St. Paul's Church of Christ. So you've already accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And you believe he died on the cross for you. And God raised him from the dead on the third day with all power in his hand. Let me hear you say, yeah. 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 Amen. Let's give God some praise. We already have uh, Sister Price's information. We're going uh, to we're gonna try to do first hand, first, uh, right hand of fellowship on first Sunday and baptism on first Sunday. Uh, so if you could be here the first Sunday, we'll get the right hand of fellowship. You have all rights and privileges of any other member of the church. All right. Brother Deacons, we're going to vote. We're not voting on your salvation or anything, but just your acceptance into this church. It says a formality. You got it? Someone, one of y'all got it? Can you? Brother Pastor, we move that Sister Price be accepted as a candidate of a member of, ba of Mount Ali Baptist Church and after giving the right hand of fellowship be given all privileges and rights as a full-fledged member of Mount Ali Baptist Church. Vote the proper second. All those in favor show by the usual voting sign of I. Any opposed? No, nah, because ain't nobody mad but the devil. Come on, give God some praise. Wave at your family. Come on. This is witness. This is ministry. Amen. Standing all over the sanctuary as we get ready to go home.
standing all over the sanctuary. It's a new prayer. All right. Oh. Kamish, are you selling these t-shirts? All right. Where's Alvin? Alvin Williams. What's up, Alvin? I thought that was you. How you doing, man? So good to see you. God, let's thank God for Brother Alvin Williams. He used to help me come shovel snow at the crib. That's that, brother. Yeah, I got a snowblower now, though, so come holler at me, man. It'd be a whole lot easier. <laughs> These are some shirts, some beautiful shirts. Uh, we'll talk more about it, but we want to do stuff. We're going to start doing some merchandising products. We've got some stuff opening up. God is up to something. Just keep praying. Has people? Uh, we've already had a bunch of prayers answered. I just got a new prayer request. So Miracle Signs and Wonders prayer request starting in February. I'm trying to get y'all. We're cutting off first Sunday in February. So we're winding down. Don't miss your miracle. Don't miss it because you just didn't write it down. Now watch this. There's four prayers on here. Three of them already been checked off. We ain't only but in the third Sunday of January. God is already moving. Amen. Every head bowed as we stand and bow in reverence now of God. God, you are awesome. You are wonderful. You are mighty. We don't even get it, the truth be told, God, that you would choose us and love us knowing everything about us and I pray that in the message today we heard God that the truth is we could never get it so right that it would make you love us any more than you already love us we could never get it so wrong that you stop loving us because you chose to love us from the first place before we did anything while we were yet sinners before we even thought that we wanted to try to do right you still chose us you still loved us God and it's marvelous in our sight God, help us to know your love better that we may love our brothers and our sisters better. We may love ourselves better. God, we thank you for what you're doing in this season. Sister Essie said in my office the other day, she said something, I declare that flesh and blood did not reveal it to her. She said, God sent you back to Brownsville because he heard the cries of the people. God, we need a change. But Lord, I hear you saying, and I ain't going to come till you start crying and telling me you really want it. So, Lord, we're crying out to you. Every cry ain't loud. Every cry ain't got the ugly cry face. Sometimes it's just the silent tears. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, we as a church, we as a people, we come crying out to you right now, God. Standing with our ministry partners online, on Facebook, live stream, YouTube. Thanking them for the partnership. Collectively, God, we're going to get the glory. Because you're going to get the glory. <laughs> but what will happen in this season? And Lord, we thank you that when it's all said and done, we're going to be able to look back and know we were a part of history. Not just natural history, but kingdom history. Let Mount Ali be used in such a way, God, to where when the history books are written, they can't write it without including the witness, the testimony, the transformations, the miracles, signs, and wonders 
It happened at that little church called Mount Olive Baptist Church, sitting up on a hill in Brownsville, Brooklyn. God, we receive it. We believe it. And we turn to you now that it may happen. Bless us and keep us as we go from your gathered people to your scattered people. Rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. And God, if you be so kind tonight, let every hour of sleep give us two hours of rest. And we promise to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And all those who could triumphantly shout it out together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen again. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Hug somebody. Tell them I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. We'll be back same place, same time next week. Thank you for joining. Make sure you hit the Give Contribute Now button if you were blessed that we may continue in ministry. And I can pay Samantha and Angel. Amen.